So you guys want to start a rare plant collection and you want my advice? So flattered. <laughs> I'm Micah and welcome back to Rare Plants in Paris. Today we will be talking about how to start your rare plant collection in this beautiful year of 2020. Mm -hmm. There will be a lot of talking today so get your tea ready. Today's video would specifically apply if you are in Europe. It might not really make sense if you are in another part of the world because of different plant markets, resources, the weather, etc. And I would like to emphasize 2020 because the plant market changes, just like plants. Sorry. What is rare now might not be rare anymore in the next year or maybe even in six months. My suggestions are what we call the basic rares. These are the rare plants that at the moment have lost their unicorn status. They have been easier to find lately. But if your local plant store sells it, it will disappear quickly in a matter of days or even hours. When you shop for rare plants, you will mostly find three types. The genus Philodendron, the genus Anthurium, and Varigatas. These are Latin okay I'm not making up these names I will be recommending one of each from these three types these are what I call my starter pack to rare plants they no longer cost a kidney no longer untruvab like a mermaid and they're easier to care for because more and more people are sharing their experiences with them. These are my three criteria as to why I recommend them. Also, you know, it doesn't really make sense for you to care for a holy grail plant right away when you can even manage a begonia, a calathea, or even a monstera. Am I right? You need a practice plant first. And when I say that, I don't mean to undermine them. These practice plants are not bad at all. I know sometimes we get overwhelmed. We see this influencer with all of these plants and you want the same for yourself but being a plant parent is a responsibility if the plant is happy who's happy you yes you because also assuming you paid so much money for this plant of course you don't want to waste all of that money right mm -hmm. okay first off from house variegata we have the crowd favorite monstera albo porcijana <laughs> So this is Lore Hi. and this is Philippe. Hi. A wise man once said, you cannot make everyone happy. You're not the Monstera. I just made that up. <laughs> First off is Lore. I got her in the middle of the confinement. No shipping delays, ultra fast. Literally came with a meter long air roots. After receiving her, I placed the cutting in water. A month later, nothing. Crickets. Transferred her to sphagnum moss. She was definitely happier. She gave out beautiful roots. Then I planted her in soil. She gave out her first leaf. Another half moon. No holes, no fenestration. It, it only makes sense anytime you disturb a plant. The next leaf will not be the same as the former leaf. It needs some time to adjust. The new leaf looks like a type constellation. When I first saw this leaf, I wasn't really happy. I was really hoping for another half moon or maybe something sectoral, but I can understand that it's beneficial to have a lot of green sometimes because of photosynthesis. You must know that from science class. If it's all white and then there's no green, the green pigment called chlorophyll, then it will die. It will turn brown just like this. This is Philippe. <laughs> I got her from a local plant store. One day, I was just browsing through Facebook. I saw this comment that they're selling it there. Called my friend and right away the next day, we were there 10 minutes before opening. That's why they call them crazy plant people. This plant is so in demand that what was left on the second day are not really the best. Still good, but you know, the best ones were probably taken the previous day. And I wasn't really supposed to buy, but he was calling me. It was like, I couldn't resist. I saw the all white leaf called ghost leaf. This was that. This is what happens when there's no green. It's sad, but I still find it really beautiful. It looked just like this. It's the only white supremacy I support. So compared to the all green Monstera, just like this one, obviously it has white. It's a result of a genetic mutation in the cell of the plant that can either be inherited or by accident. In short, it's basically something humans cannot control or make. Like a happy accident. 
Lately, I've been noticing that it just exploded everywhere in Europe, like mushrooms. You go on Facebook or anywhere online and I swear you will always come across a seller selling one of these. Websites like Monstera Mania are cultivating them massively. It's no wonder, how often do you find a plant with white? It's normally green. There are two cases in getting one. The first one is you have money to spend and you have no patience so you get a full grown plant right away. The second one is you have less money and a lot of patience then you get a cutting. I personally prefer to get a cutting because it's such a joy to see a small plant growing into something big under your circumstances. So if you get a cutting, ideally you want to produce regular roots so that it can live better in soil. I recommend using Kaylee Ellen's technique of dipping it in wax. Light a tea candle like this one, wait for the wax to liquefy a bit, turn it off, and then dip that part where the seller has cut it so that you can avoid rotting in there. An example is this one. Then you either root it in water or in sphagnum moss. Please be mindful when using sphagnum moss. It's a natural resource that takes 7 to 10 years to grow to its harvest size. If you must use sphag, please reuse it. Don't just throw it away. The whole point of having this urban jungle is to care for the planet. When your cutting has roots, plant it in soil. At this stage, be careful when you're watering. It hasn't fully rooted in the soil yet. It's practically the same care as the green monstera. The main differences are, first, the white portion cannot absorb light. So this plant works twice as hard to photosynthesize. This explains why it's known to be a slow grower. Low light conditions are not ideal. Second, you might need to reset it. If you're consistently getting close, you might have to cut it after the node to reset the plant back to green. In this case, this ghost leaf is promising me a green leaf after. If this puts out another ghost leaf, then yep, I might have to cut it. Monsteras prefer soil that is consistently lightly moist. It's an epiphyte, means it grows on the surface of another plant, like moss, orchids, ferns. So of course, if you're growing on the surface of a tree, you're not sitting on wet soil all day long. I strongly recommend that you guys invest in one of these. For 10 bucks, it's saving my life. See, sometimes it's not enough that you just dip your finger in the soil because you don't know what's happening on the bottom or like in the center. The variegated Monstera Deliciosa thrives in increased humidity of 60%. A well draining soil and temperatures between 18 and 27 celsius fertilize monthly during spring and summer do not fertilize in autumn and winter and if you do get a grown plant right away please consider aerating your soil sellers and nurseries compact their soil to avoid shifting during transit but do be careful not to disturb the roots too much so once you understand how variegation works then you can get other types of variegated plants there's monstera aurea monstera adansoni variegated which is so expensive. Monstera Thai Constellation, Burl Marks Variegata, Variegated Billy Tea, Variegated Alocasia, and so on. Okay, next from House Anthurium, we have Anthurium Clarinetium. Welcome to the show, guys. How are you today? in Australia, these guys are still crazy expensive. The price I paid is equivalent to a good meal in Paris. It doesn't cost an arm. Anthuriums are from the Neotropics, South America, Mexico, the Caribbean. This one is endemic to Chiapas, Mexico. My guess is it's because of their country of origin. For an instance, a kangaroo. Kangaroos are native to Australia. If you're like me in France and you see a kangaroo in the middle of Paris, you'd be like, Ooh, la, 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 la. But if you see a kangaroo in Australia, you'd be like, Good day, mate! The common anthuriums we see are the flamingo flower and the anthurium scherzerianum. It is only lately, I swear to God, I'm seeing more and more of this in Paris. There is not a lot, but like one time we were walking by Canal Saint Martin and this floral shop right there was selling two of these. With anthuriums, unlike philodendrons, you want a little bit more space around the roots because they grow fast and wide. The leaves are the standard Valentine's Day heart. 
and the feel is not exactly velvety but like leathery. Their roots are like udon. Hair is pretty easy compared to the other rare anthuriums. It is also an epiphy. So again, when caring for a plant, you gotta think like a plant. If in my natural habitat, I'm stuck on a tree 8 feet above ground, does that mean I sit in wet soil all day long? Nope. This is why you need a loose, well-draining soil. This is a must for anthuriums because they're prone to root rot. My personal recommendation for a well-draining soil are a combination of perlite, peat moss, orchid bark, standard organic soil, and a little bit of charcoal. So if I water this plant, the water goes straight down right away. Again, think like a plant. Why are they living under trees? It's because they love bright and direct light. Sorry. If you want your anthurium to have a darker green color, give it a little bit less light. Anthuriums in general love humidity, 60 to 80, temperatures between 18 to 29. Do not be like this girl guessing the temperature and the humidity. There's a 30% chance that it's already raining. Get one of these. This tells you the humidity and the temperature. See, I'm in a good one. It's also for the skin. Lastly, it's a flowering plant. Although personally, I don't like their flowers. It looks like a... For the sake of this video, I actually left one for you guys. It looks like that. By cutting this flower in the stem, it is also said that you are cutting off the energy supply that goes to this flower and rather distributing that to the leaves or in the production of another leaf. I personally haven't seen it growing that fast just because I'm cutting the flowers. So after having an understanding of this anthurium, then yes, you can definitely go get yourself the other anthuriums. Crystallinum, Magnificum, Forgetti, Queen Anthurium, Moroquiana, King Anthurium, Vichai, Vichai. Anthurium pallidiflorum. What I also appreciate about anthuriums are their beautiful hybrids, etc. Cool? Next! Our last guest for today from House Philodendron, Philodendron Varicoso! Hold up, before you all be judging why she looks like this. Philodendron varicosum has at least 25 variants that I know of. This one, I believe, is the shiny form. I could be wrong, but it's definitely not the regular one. There are a lot of these in Europe right now, all thanks to plant nurseries like Nalumbo Garden. So we went for a summer vacation. It was an amazing time, just being far away from the hustle and bustle of city life, all of this construction. Then my friend who was planned sitting for me on the second week sent me pictures that this plant was being devoured by spider mites. I actually had to come home a little bit earlier. I was managing that catastrophe until 4 a.m. in the morning. It literally had 18 beautiful leaves. And when I came back, I'm down to three. All of these three all have damages still. If you can see, she has grown long without a hole. She came with three stems. The one in the middle has the most damage from the spider mites. So I decided to cut and propagate that. It's just so sad. Still find it cute. It's like dabbing, you know. <coughs> The natural habitat of this one is central to South America. Philodendron varicosum actually grows at an altitude of 65 to 200 meters and is therefore very diverse in its needs. The highest point in Paris is the Sacrica. Its peak is at 83 meters. Can you imagine living as high as that? Higher than Snoop Dogg? Over the past six months, I've seen a decrease in the pricing, just like the Monstera Albo Borsigiana. And since it's a philodendron, it's relatively easy to care for and to propagate. The care for this plant is pretty much the same as the other philodendrons. Bright and direct light, airy well draining soil, not letting the soil completely dry out. Always throw out the water in that saucer since they are velvety leaves in here. Humidity is important. Otherwise, it will be prone to crispy edges. And depending on the origin of your varicosum, it can actually tolerate a colder environment. Remember, in the mountains, it can be cold. Just be sure not to go below 4.5 Celsius. And just like what happened to me, they are very prone to spider mites. If you see that white specks react quickly. Actually, my mistake was I already asked the plant community what they think of it. And there was this random guy who told me it's spider mites. But I refused to believe him because I wasn't seeing any webbing or any insect crawling. I was actually thinking back then that it has something to do with the hard water we have here in Paris. A lot of calcium deposits, aka calcaire. Later on, I've learned that if you actually see the insects and the webbing, you are in the late stage. Now, you have to quarantine this plant, murder 
those spider mites. As a prevention method against pests, especially now that it's trying to bounce back, every week I spray this one with a solution of soapy water with a little bit of neem oil. Take note that you would have to scrub the leaves with an old toothbrush or an old makeup brush to stop an impending witchcraft about to curse your home. I was actually doing the same preventative spray, but I wasn't scrubbing the leaves. So I guess they went partying while we were away. Because actually from this infestation, all of my allocations were infected so bad. Death, as it is a climber, it is recommended to have a moss pole so that the plant can gain some height and strength. I've seen something on Instagram and it was just so beautiful, so I'm not giving it a moss pole. Just being real. After mastering the care and the defense against the dark arts, then you can venture to other philodendrons, Gloriosum, Pastazana, Florida Ghost, Florida Beauty, Melanochrysum, the list goes on and on. And that ends my recommendation, you guys. I hope I have given some light. The takeaway is start small, feel your plants, feel their vibe, get to know them, learn from them, enjoy them. And when you have enough experience, then please go for your other dreams plants but also take it one step at a time and if you like this video make sure to subscribe and please give me a like merci d'avoir regardé cette video see you très très bientôt au revoir bisous